Frederick County Sheriff Chuck Jenkins, who works in that building behind me, is one of the toughest sheriffs in the nation on illegal immigration. Well, Jenkins thinks the bill would be bad for the country, while a Frederick immigration lawyer says it's well overdue. Lamont Ellis was gunned down near Molnix Alley behind me in September of last year. Parsley and Beale are afraid people won't be pumping gas at their stations when the tax goes into effect. Please hope the campaign encourages people to buckle up or they could get a ticket like this one costing them $25. A uh, Sharpsburg man was doing some yard work when he made a very interesting discovery. Habitat will repair and paint battles porch here. Then they'll weatherize those windows by caulking them. And finally, they'll repair and paint the porch of that house across the street. It's known as the quiet room and students can come here just to relax, read a book, or talk to advisors and counselors. They say this will help them bring in more volunteers and help the company clean Climb the ladder to success. Phoenix Rising is saving Habitat $20,000 by donating their time to demolish these trailers. Lamont Ellis was gunned down near Molnix Alley behind me in September of last year. Now, leads have barely begun trickling in, so Ellis's family and friends have started raising some money for a reward fund in hope of tracking down a suspect. Um, I'll be back. Jennifer Sisler wears this promise ring around her neck since she never had a chance to marry her sweetheart, Lamont Ellis. It's extremely difficult. Um, just a day to day basis, it's a struggle for me uh, now, you know, instantly becoming a single parent. Sisler is now a single mother because police say Ellis was shot near this alley on September 30th, 2012, after spending time with friends in Frederick. Police don't have any suspects at this point, so Ellis's family and friends have put together a $2,000 reward for information leading to an arrest and prosecution. We just want people to be aware that there is a murder on the streets. Um, Lamont was just an innocent victim walking back to his car, and it could be anyone. At this point, we don't have any suspects. However, we are appreciative that the family has put together the reward money. We're hoping to generate tips with that. The best thing for people to do is to call the tip line at 301-600-TIPS. Sisler and Ellis had a 21-month-old son together, and Ellis had three other daughters. People will call him, can you help me move something at the last minute, and he would be there in two seconds and help you move, you know, a couch, or if you need to do this or that, he was always there to help everyone out. Now Ellis's friends and family hope to bring in tips through the reward money. We really are looking for justice in his case. Um, you know, Lamont had his children and his family and a lot of friends and a lot of people that really cared about him. And we just feel like we need the closure. Lamont Ellis's girlfriend also told me the family will never give up and allow this to become a cold case. They're hoping to continue building the reward fund in hopes of bringing some closure to this tragic situation. Live in Frederick, I'm Dawn White. Jeff and Jeannie, back to you. Brandon, hoping every day you come home. Jeannie Turner's family has fond memories of the two-year-old boy who always had a smile on his face. I always say, um... I wonder what job he's doing now that he's 13. Tina Naylor has to wonder how her grandson Jahi is doing because he went missing this week, 11 years ago. Jahi's stepdad reported him missing from a park in San Diego. Police never charged anyone with a crime, and his family still holds out hope he's alive. I pray every day for Jahi. I know he's out there somewhere. I just pray again, hope that one day he will come back to his family. I hope you're safe and hope we get to see you soon. This sketch done by the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children shows what he could look like today. Frederick City Police have worked with San Diego Police in the past. I think we're all holding out hope that uh, Jahi is still alive and that he's out there somewhere and hopefully they can locate him and bring him home to his mother. Dina will have Jahi Day here at Hope Circle this Thursday. Family and friends will remember him and then release yellow and white balloons into the sky. She doesn't know it's always a what if. Where is he? How is he? You know, is he still with us? I thank God for keeping, keeping me strong throughout all this. He's kept me strong these 11 years, and I'm sure, most definitely sure, he'll keep me strong 11 more years and 11 more and 11 more because I would never give up. Jay's family think of the boy who loved to ride his bike and play catch every day and hope they'll see his smiling face again. In Frederick Dawn White, WHAG News.
Metro Meteor won $300,000 in his heyday at Saratoga and Belmont, but he's become a Triple Crown winner in retirement. As you can see behind me, he's become an in-demand artist with a flair for abstract art. <laughs> These paintings are flying off the shelves at Gallery 30 in Gettysburg, but they're not done by a human. It certainly is unusual, but um, it's very bright. And it's very cheerful. People respond to it. Metro Meteor retired here at this farm in northern Frederick County. His owners wanted him to have something to do to keep him busy. With the personality that Metro has of always moving around and his, you know, he, um, moves his head a lot and his legs, so Ron being an artist thought if I could get a brush in his mouth that'd be, you know, that'd be kind of pretty cool. He picked up to it real quickly. Um, I was surprised how quickly that he picked up painting and I think he just really loves it. He knows that's his job now. Metro Meteor rockets by them all. Oh, it just blew him away. Metro's racing career ended due to bone growth in his knee. Good boy. But now he paints with a brush in his mouth for about an hour each day. The Kajewskis call this Studio 6. It's where Metro exercises his artistic side on this canvas. Metro's paintings are sold even before they hit the shelves. More than 120 people are on the waiting list for his large paintings. We've shipped them to 34 different states, Greece, Japan, Canada. Um, we get calls from, from all over the country. I can't not believe how popular he's gotten. I was hoping that we could just sell a couple of paintings and help with his vet bills, but I mean, he's just kind of turned into this sensation and he's just in demand. I wish I had his career. A career and life of happiness that's made possible through this unusual love story of a man and his horse. Metro's paintings have raised about $17,000 for a retired horse racing fund. The other half goes into a fund to help him with experimental treatments for his knee. Live in Rocky Ridge, I'm Dawn White. Jeff and Jeannie, back to you. Good morning and thanks for joining us. I'm Dawn White. We begin this morning with news of a school shooting. Police say it happened at a mall branch of a community college in Christiansburg, Virginia, yesterday afternoon. According to school officials, a man shot two women before he was subdued by police. Officials say one of the victims was airlifted to the hospital and the other person was taken by ambulance. Their identities and conditions have not been released. Officials also haven't identified a gunman or a motive. And that leads us to our latest web poll. We want to know, are you worried about a school shooting here? Just head to yourforstate.com to cast your ballot. Meanwhile, a Sharpsburg man was doing some yard work when he made a very interesting discovery. He found a piece of Civil War history that required immediate attention from a bomb squad. WHAG's B. Joy Joseph is in Washington County with this story. A massive recall is affecting millions of cars. And not only that, the problem could be putting drivers in danger. WHAG Shana Halper finds out what you need to know, what you need to do, and which cars are involved. And the Japanese manufacturer at the center of this recall is a global supplier, so there is a chance the recall could expand to other brands. And, of course, we'll update you if that turns out to be the case. And in Martinsburg, the Raminator is making a local appearance this weekend as part of a grand reopening celebration at Miller's Auto. Miller's Auto hopes that the monster truck fans will come out to take a look at the trucks and also interact with the drivers and mechanics. The trucks will start crushing cars today at 2 in the afternoon. And Raminator is one of the two Ram monster trucks that tour the country and competes. And it's 6.05, time to check the forecast. Meteorologist Dan Peck is standing by with more. Good morning, Dan. Good morning, Dawn. As WHAG News continues, many of us have tried Pilates, but how about your four-legged friends? We'll show you one instructor who has her students barking with joy. Stay with us. At 6.35, time to check the forecast. Meteorologist Dan Peck is in the Weather Center with more. So things certainly got a little chilly overnight, Dan. After the break, we'll have a morning newsmaker who will show us two furry friends, the one you have and her brother that are up for adoption and what kitten season is all about. Stay with us. It looks like a bandit here wants to get out and enjoy the sunshine today. I don't know. He does. <laughs> a little eager here to go out and play. She's a little bit calmer. Yeah. And that'll do it for us this morning. For local news around the clock, visit our website, yourforestate.com. Have a great Sunday.